25-20 to start the second quarter play. The Knicks leading the Lakers and a lot of Laker fans in the house tonight. Yes, they travel well all the way to Las Vegas. And joining us right now, the general manager, Rob Palenka. Rob, thanks for sharing some of your time with us. Yeah, Mark, you and Doris, I think, are the MVPs. I, I've oh, watched boy. all these summer oh, league games, and every game you have equal <laughs> energy. I don't know how you do it. Appreciate that, brother. It. We appreciate Love the work. That. Love the work. Appreciate that. Hey, Rob, first of all, you know, there have been some seismic shifts in your roster, <laughs> all right? So how do you navigate the massive roster overturn from a team that won the championship just a short while ago, really, when you look at calendar time? Listen, I think in the NBA it's all about opportunity and when you have a chance to add a, you know, a true unicorn player like Russell Westbrook to our core players, Anthony Davis and LeBron James, that's something you got to take a hard look at. And Russell's, as everybody knows, his level of competitiveness is just at such an elite level. And that's one of the things we want to build, you know, this Lakers team on is guys that want to compete at the highest level. And we just feel like he was the perfect playmaker to bring in and, and play with Anthony and to play with LeBron and extend their careers. And we're really, really excited about him joining the team. Uh, what I love about Russell, Rob, is you know what you're getting nightly, a guy who fills up the stat sheet, but my favorite aspect is how hard he plays and how competitive he is. Uh, as, you, as you look at the other additions, whether it's Carmelo or one other guy that really stands out in terms of meeting a need for you. You know, in talking to these guys, they, they all just bought into being stars in their role. You know, whether it's Carmelo, Anthony, Trevor Ariza, you know, Kent Bazemore. Um, you know, guys that were just excited to come in. Dwight Howard bringing him back. Um, and then add in some young guys, uh, Malik Monk and um, Kendrick Nunn, that, that'll provide some speed and, and you know, and, and just interchangeability in the backcourt. So we're really excited the way the roster came together. And I think Coach Vogel, of course, he prides himself on defense, and that's where the work has to be done. He's got a great system, and we lost some players that were key defenders. And we know all of us, the guys that are coming in, are going to have to increase their efforts and pay attention to detail with Coach Vogel and his system. But we trust that, and we think we'll be a great defensive team as well. Yeah, you guys, Rob, were a top-five defensive-rated team a season ago. Shooting uh, seems to be something that – is a common theme that seems to come up with the Lakers perimeter shooting. Um, how much do you figure that Wayne Ellington and Kendrick Nunn, who was all rookie a couple seasons ago, might help in that aspect? Yeah, I think if you look at Wayne Ellington, just elite shooter. Um, Kent Bazemore was a 40% plus shooter. I think Malik Monk shot the ball really well. We know Carmelo's a sniper in the corners. So that was a huge priority for us. There were two things we were looking at to address with the roster. One was playmaking and, and Russell Westbrook, you know, more than check that box and then adding shooting just to create the space for, you know, LeBron and, and Anthony to, to, to be the elite players they are. I think the shooting is going to really open up the court. Rob, having been around uh, the great Kobe Bryant for as long as you were, you now have LeBron James who will enter year 19. Uh, just, I, I don't know what hasn't been said about LeBron James, but what, what stands out the most in your interactions with him and watching him work? You know, just transcendent leadership. You know, I think uh, Kobe was a guy that, you know, would maybe get in his teammates, you know, face and have some choice words to motivate. But LeBron just seems to do it with his work ethic. Um, he's, he's amazing. Just the consistency with which he treats every day and to get ready for the season, I think, He's definitely just an around-the-clock worker, and everything is methodical. Everything's thought through. He's got a great performance team around him. But the dedication he puts into the game is what's allowing him to play at an MVP level, you know, going 17, 18 years in the league. It's just really jaw-dropping. It is. It's incredible. Rob, we so appreciate yeah. you visiting with hey, us. Hey, Rob, it looks like you've been on some of those Versa Climber sessions with LeBron, man. You're in good shape. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Trying to stay up with these guys. But uh, I, when, I, when I'm working out in the gym, uh, at the home gym, I got you guys on uh, ESPN and uh, – Loving the broadcast, loving your coverage of Summer League. Look well, forward to you guys doing your thing every year, and you're the best. We appreciate you, Rob, and All good right. luck moving forward this season. Take Thank care, you. guys. See you down the road. Take you got care. It. Yep. See ya. Rob Link, the general manager of the Los Angeles Lakers, and uh, it's going to be very intriguing to see how it all comes together this year in Los Angeles with the Lakers with, as I started off the line of questioning, just a seismic shift. In yeah. That's true.
It was not messy for Russell Westbrook. He's home. Oh. You see that? Well He's home, officially. It's been a bit of a circuitous route for the Long Beach native, right? Went to UCLA, drafted by Oklahoma City, teamed up with KD for eight of his 11 seasons, helped the Thunder to the 2012 NBA Finals, and left town as the franchise's all-time leading scorer. Then Westbrook gets traded to Houston where he's reunited with his former Thunder teammate, James Harden. He would average over 27 a game there, but the Rockets were eliminated by the Lakers in the second round of the playoffs. So what happens? Well, Westbrook on the move again. Traded to Washington prior to last season, the nine-time All-NBA selection, averaged a triple-double, helped the Wiz to their first playoff berth in three seasons, and now look where he is. Westbrook may have his best shot yet at taking a title as he joins LeBron. AD, Carmelo, and the Lakers. You're talking about name recognition. Wow. Put him on the marquee. He becomes the third former MVP to start four straight seasons with a different team, the first to be traded in three straight seasons. Here's what he had to say today. First, man, it's uh, surreal. I think it still hasn't kind of hit me yet that uh, being from L.A., growing up not too far from here, being able to watch the parades, try to go to a missed school to try to go to him, being a Laker fan and being from LA, but now everything coming full circle for me is uh, it's a blessing. You know, it's, it's uh, a lot of things I can't put into actual words just because, you know, some of these dreams don't come true for people like myself. Um, and I'm truly blessed and thankful for this opportunity. And, you know, I can't wait to get started. I've been blessed to be able to go into my 14th season. And each year I try to find ways, like Rob mentioned, to be able to uplift and make my teammates better around me. And AD and Brian are, are friends of mine first. And me being their teammate, my job is to come in and uh, up- uplift them. And they'll do the same with me, vice versa. Um, and as the season prolongs, uh, we will figure it out. There will be ups, there will be downs, and that's that's normal. That's okay. Uh, but we will figure out uh, how to play the best way that we want to play to, to be able to win a championship. The Lakers have been in full retool mo- mode in pursuit of said championship. Of course, we're bouncing the first round of the playoffs. They now have five players that have eight or more All-Star selections. According to Elias, no team in NBA history has had five eight-time All-Stars appear for them in a single season. The only person busier maybe than Rob Palenka in the Lakers front office is Dave McMenamin because he went straight from the playoffs and now he's covering Summer League for us as well and covering the Lakers as always. You were there. You listened, Dave. What stood out to you from Westbrook's first public comments officially as a Laker? Well, when we're talking about name recognition type of people, Al Duncan, I'm glad to be talking to you. But the name of the day in L.A. was Russell Westbrook. And certainly he grew up just 15 miles south of downtown. He said he would skip school sometimes, go to Laker uh, championship parades. And you can talk about the on-court stuff. That's dynamic. That's going to be interesting to see how him, LeBron James, and Anthony Davis share the ball. But it's all the off-court stuff that stood out to me. The fact that he had such a deep tie to Kobe Bryant and Kobe Bryant felt like he was one of the few guys in the league that shared the same type of competitive spirit that he did. The fact that the first time he ever played in the postseason was against the Lakers. The fact that that when he had that 20-20-20 game in honor of Nipsey Hussle, that was against the Lakers. And he told me three or four years ago, it would have been a pipe dream to consider slipping on the purple and gold. Now it's a reality. He had his dad, a big time Lakers fan at Staples Center today for the introductory press conference. And it's a big moment for him because he's coming home. And he's going to recognize that, that first home game when he gets called 100 times for tickets. Like, you got us? We good? (laughs) Um, So you talked about the on-court stuff. That's really up to Frank Vogel, right? Lakers head coach. I know he was also part of that press conference. How is he going to integrate Westbrook into this roster? Frank says there's going to be a change in style next season. He wants to be a fast break. He said the good thing is that Russ, LeBron, AD are all make the right type of play type of players and certainly that means they're not just going to be about their numbers on the scoring end of the basketball court it's going to be finding the open man he says all three of those guys can play off the ball now Russell Westbrook's three-point percentage could suggest that he'll need some work in playing off the ball especially with the looks that LeBron James can create for his teammates but Rob Palenka said a top priority this offseason was to add a playmaker and Russell Westbrook said it is his responsibility to take some of the load off of LeBron James next season because as much as we want to talk about this collection of talent, we can't forget year 19 for LeBron James next year. He turns 37 years old in December. It's going to be nice to have a 32-year-old running mate.